Okay guys, uh, in today's video I'm going to go over uh, a dual element water heater and how it works. Um, I had the one in my house uh, go crazy and uh, get way too hot for no reason. And uh, turns out one of the thermostats uh, got stuck and uh, wouldn't open up when it hit the temperature. So um, I had to troubleshoot it and uh, it ends up uh, just being a $12 part. but uh, when it was all said and done, it it, it was kind of a uh, a cool, fascinating uh, electrical circuit. Uh, it's one of those baffling circuits where there's uh, voltage everywhere, uh, all the time. Even when on off, it, it it's it seems it seems impossible that it even works. Uh, but it's all about you know getting the right perspective and uh, learning where to put your voltmeter at. Uh, and uh, when you're working with 240 volts and no neutral. So real quickly, I just wanted to go over a schematic of, of how this thing basically works. Um, the, the water tank has uh, an upper and lower element, and um, it has a 240 volt input. Uh, and I'm showing right here, this is your, your emergency uh, reset switch. And what it's supposed to do is in case it get, all else fails and the water gets too hot, it's supposed to uh, open up to disengage uh, your 240 input from the rest of the circuit down here uh, to save the day. Uh, plus you have your mechanical pressure relief valve as well that in case this uh, fails. Um, but anyway, just to go over real quick how it normally is supposed to work if, we, if we're starting with a fresh tank of cold water when electricity first gets turned on um, the upper uh, element gets first uh, go at the electricity. Um, this uh, thermostat will be um, in its uh, uh, position where one and two are closed. And this is going to give the 120 volt side this way to come down to get on this side of the element. And on this other side of the element will be the other 120 leg come in. So now we'll have 240 volts potential across the um, the heating element here and uh, the way it's supposed to work is uh, as uh, uh, because the you want to heat the water at the top first because if you heat it at the bottom hot water rises and uh, you kind of defeat the purpose by starting at the bottom so you want to heat the top of the water first um, so after the uh, the top elements uh, heats the top of it and it gets satisfied and hits a temperature mark here what this uh, With this little relay temperature switch is supposed to do is now it's supposed to take the the 120 leg come in here and and, and take it off too and now give it to four um, uh, To allow the lower uh, Element to work. So once the the switch throws here and one is connected to four then 120 volts uh, comes down this way uh, this switch will be uh, engaged. It'll be in the closed position here because it temp its temperature won't be uh, up to snuff yet. So the 120 volts will come across here to get to this uh, side of the element. The other side of the element is getting its 120 volt lag all the time uh, from this side. So now we have the 240 volt potential across the bottom element. Now this makes this element heat up and start heating the water up. And when the, um, the temperature gets high enough, then um, uh, this switch will uh, open here and the, uh, um, uh, the element here will no longer have 240 across it, uh, so it'll turn off. And it'll sit this way until the uh, temperature goes down enough and um, um, the upper element will grab control back again. Uh, it's kind of a thing to where I, I think you could uh, actually set the lower, um, and that's the way it was on mine, you can really set the, the lower and the upper one um, to different ranges to favor one or the other. But I, I believe there's, you know, you should get them to where they're balanced uh, so that they're basically, you know, using half the, uh, doing half the load each. But that's just the simple operation of it, um, and it, it, it's pretty straightforward. There's nothing surprising about it. Now, um, on this upper switch right here, if, if, 
if this switch gets stuck between uh, one and two, this, because the connection on this side of it is continuous, this element will stay on uh, and there will be no stop in it. It'll just cook, cook, cook until eventually it hits the trip up here. So yeah, that's one source of failure. Um, if it uh, ever got stuck up uh, between one and four, then the, uh, uh, the symptom would be the upper element would never get hot and the bottom element would always do all the, do all the work. So uh, that's failure number two. Now, um, on the uh, uh, bottom one down here, the same scenario, if pins one and two get uh, stuck, uh, it's just going to go uh, overload here on this, on this element and never stop heating. And because the water is always hot, this will always be stuck between one and four, and uh, it'll never get a break except up to here. This will be the emergency thing that kicks in. And that's exactly what happened in mine. Um, my lower thermostat here got stuck between one and two. No matter how you set the thing, it never releases. It never opens up. So it, it got scalding hot coming out of the uh, tap. And thank goodness this thing did kick in or we'd have a, we'd have a, uh, a whistle train there. Um, but um, the other thing I wanted to point out is because both of these elements always have... Uh, at least one leg of the 120 going to them uh, that if either one of these elements becomes grounded to earth then you'll the the element will at least be able to, to cook on uh, with 120 volts worth of uh, electricity uh, if it's got the other um, uh, side coming it's just going to cook even more but that would uh, create another uh, runaway um, uh, hot water situation and um, you would be able to, to um, determine that real quickly by just uh, lifting off the leads and doing a continuity check to ground on either side of them uh, plus it'd be kind of obvious when you went to uh, when you went to do the the voltage uh, check so um, uh, but anyway, um, there because you'd have a weird you'd have 120 on this side and a weird voltage over here that you're not supposed to have uh, because it was getting uh, uh, messed with inside here. Um, the other thing I did want to uh, notice, uh, just so you know that, uh, so let's say for instance this uh, switch up here is in the one to four position, so this um, element here is uh, de-energized. Uh, if you look at it, uh, inside this, like on mine, they measure 15 ohms worth of resistance. So uh, the 120 leg here comes through, goes through a 15 ohm resistor, and then back out to here to 2. So if you were to take a voltmeter and measure from ground to here, you're going to measure the 120 volts going through the, uh, the coil of the, uh, of the element here. And it's going to be, uh, you know, good good 120 volts as far as your your meter is is concerned but it's not like the same 120 volts you have here where it's the full power side this is kind of like a i don't want to call it fake but it's a misleading 120 volts on this other side and that's what uh, uh led me to make the next drawing which really is a kind of a mind blower um in that um um it shows you how if when you're going from uh, from ground it seems like when when you're when you're first looking at these things it's like there's voltage everywhere all the time so I want to go through the three uh, separate states of it one at a time and talk about uh, each one of these so we're going to start over here with the, with the upper element on and we can see on the voltmeter up here we're always going to have our 240 input coming in and now I'm going to start and go around uh, from the uh, 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 counterclockwise here. So with this voltmeter right here, we're measuring 120 volts. And this is a real power meeting, uh, reading right here. This is the, the connection coming between here. The switch is in between 1 and 2 right now. So uh, this is a legitimate 120 volts. Um, on this voltmeter here, we're seeing this 120 meet this 120 here. So we got the, the, the full 240 across the element. So this element here is getting hot. And um, um, as we come down here, 
we will see this one uh, is measuring 120 volts, but it's a um, it's a fake 120 volts. It's getting its 120 volts through the element back around to this side of the pole, but it does it's it doesn't have any voltage coming this way for it, so that's why it's reading 120. Um, this voltmeter here is measuring uh, across the lower element, and you can see we got zero volts across. Um, although each one would measure 120 at each leg uh, to ground, but across it there's no volts. Now up here, once again, you're getting your 120 volts uh, fake uh, voltage coming through this connection here, through the element all the way back here. Uh, but it's not a real power connection. The power connection is going over to this side. And then finally up here on this one, this this uh, 120 volts up here will always be a real power reading uh, coming from the disconnect here. Um, so this is this will be a legit power reading at all times. Okay, so there's the upper element on. Let's uh, let's switch over here to where the lower element is on. And this is where the power coming on this leg has switched now from being connected to here from one and two. It's now being connected over to here to one and four. So um, uh, we got our 240 input. The 120 here now, this is going to be a fake 120 because it's going to be getting its 120 through the coil and then back over on this side. So that 120 to ground uh, is there. Across the element uh, itself, you'll see there's zero volts. So this one's uh, cold, uh, no heat. Uh, as we come down to this one, this 120 volts here now, this is going to be a real power voltage because it's going to be coming through this switch right here up to this point where it's getting connected to this leg through here. So this is a true 120 uh, power point that comes down to this side. It's met by the other true 120 power point coming from this side. So across it, we have the 240. So now this element here is getting hot. Now, when, um, so that's the second stage. Now, when this element uh, 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 gets, gets a, the, the, the water hot enough, then this switch here is supposed to open, which didn't happen in mine. It stuck closed, but this switch is now supposed to open. And when we come and look at the last state here, when it's the water is now heated and at, at temperature and it's just sitting there waiting to be used. Now we can uh, go through again, starting at the top here, our 240 input uh, coming the same. And our 120, uh, uh, once again, uh, at this point, getting a fake voltage uh, through the element from this side. Um, our 120 here, is also once again getting the fake voltage through the element side. We have zero volts across the um, uh, the lower element, so no heat coming off of here. Okay, um, I'm sorry. the uh, The voltage here is actually the the real voltage. Um, it's not fake because it's coming through this leg here, uh, going down to be used uh, by this one, but it doesn't want to use it at this point but it's still the real power voltage here. And uh, once again, at the very end here, we got the real voltage here, uh, real power voltage here. So these are your three possible states it can be in. Um, anything, any readings different from these three would indicate some kind of uh, failure. And um, it would then uh, you would have to, you know, depending on where the, the voltage is different at, you would have to backtrack and figure out what happened. But, um, so, yeah, um, here's, the, uh, here's the end result. Um, always um, distrust circuit breakers and labels and make sure that you're uh, always super paranoid about measuring 240, making sure that it's off. Uh, not because you, you're sure you touch a breaker, but you're sure because you put your voltmeter here. And, um, and always uh, don't trust that. <laughs> go to ground and then go to everything and just poke every single thing that you can touch and make sure there's no voltage coming from anywhere. Uh, don't get yourself uh, hurt by this stuff. Uh, 
but uh, it's it is uh, very easy and doable um, if you just take it one step at a time and uh, be careful with what you do. So I'm going to uh, show you a quick video now of uh, uh, my setup, uh, uh, just where uh, I show you just the physical box here and where I had to uh, lift up my uh, my lead here uh, coming off the the lower thermostat because it was stuck on and I didn't want an out of control situation but I also didn't want to go with no uh, water so I'm just limping along right now until Amazon gives me my thermostat uh, on using just the uh, the upper uh, upper element so um, but anyway um, stand by for that all right here we are at the uh, water tank uh, I got it uh, taken apart here until we uh, can get the parts in. Um, I am just going for general purposes, going to replace the upper unit as well uh, because I found its thermostat is also uh, fairly flaky and uh, just doesn't seem to want to adjust right. And uh, here is the bottom one here. And uh, you can see I got uh, the uh, the wire disconnected from it uh, right now so we don't have a runaway steam engine going um, but yeah it's kind of fascinating when you're uh, when you're first initially uh, you know using the old voltmeter here and you're you're checking around and it's like literally 120 volts everywhere <laughs> there's there's nowhere where there's not 120 volts and it just seems like that well that's impossible but now you know. Uh, I should have uh, really looked and paid attention to the diagram here. I almost, uh, I did some reverse engineering before I realized the 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 thing was right in front of my face. So um, the, you know, don't don't do like uh, I did as far as that's concerned. But anyway, okay, there you go. I uh, hope this helps. Talk to you soon.